winter, the darkest time of the year, might sound miserable here at the Arctic due to the lack of sunlight. But the winters that I have learned to know in Finland are anything but dark thanks to snow. This light, however, is now disappearing as the Arctic is warming almost three times faster than the rest of the planet. I have wanted to capture this magical season for years now to show what we have to lose, but I had never felt ready for it, knowing that filming in the deep snow and the coldest conditions of the year would be full of challenges. But then, in the start of 2020, I had the perfect opportunity, so I decided to give this a go. To start with, I was in need for training. Thunder on the ground, a Sarek National Park is known for its demanding conditions, which we were hoping to experience in a one-week training hike. I hope that learning the skills used in a polar region expeditions would give me the confidence to film in the harsh conditions instead of just freezing in the cold. Our first two days were calm and full of sunshine, but on the third day the wind started to rise as we had hoped, especially in our campsite with mountains nearby increasing the wind speed. On the last hours of daylight gusts of wind started to appear. Now this was the reason why we were here. Surviving in these conditions comes down to right gear and knowing the proper routines and skills. Whether it's setting up a tent in a storm or coping with the constant coldness, learning these basic skills takes proper training. Having learned the essentials of cooking <laughs> and building a snow cave, for which we really won't have the conditions in Finland. Lucky me! I was much more confident in my winter camping skills and one step closer to experiencing this magical season. When planning the film, I was well aware that the production process itself would put a strain on the environment and so the film would have to be as appealing as possible. Truly speaking, for our changing climate and hopefully having a positive impact on our future. The natural choice for the film setting would be the fells and the old growth forests in the north.
but with these locations I would struggle with a paradox of cutting down my emissions and actually reaching these locations from where I currently live. This meant that my best solution for minimizing my impact would be moving to the Arctic Circle for the winter season. Now, especially in the time of global biodiversity loss, it is good to know that the old growth forests which I was planned to film do not represent today's typical Finnish forests. Today, old growth forests represent only a few percent of Finland's forest area. Now that we understand the importance of biodiversity better than before, we know that climate change and biodiversity loss cannot be addressed separately. Forestry is needed to reduce our use of fossil fuels and increase in biodiversity in commercial forests and leaving valuable ecosystems in their natural state is ever more important. These views can take us back in time, but now we are affecting even the remotest corners of this planet by a rapid change in an evolutionary timescale. At the end of autumn, the forests are most quiet after the intensive, short summer. It is hard to find yourself stressed in this surrounding, but as the season goes on, you know you are missing something. Statistically, Northern Finland has a permanent snow cover from October or November. But as an effect of climate change, snowless days have increased in the end of autumn. This loss of brightness is significant, especially on the words of polar night. Now, during the snowless November, I was planned to film a mountain hair with its winter coating. I search for the hairs in the same locations based on my previous encounters, but when trying to film this mainly nocturnal species at familiar spots, I was left empty handed. When nearing the end of November, I had to start focusing on the remaining snowless scenes. As I heard it in the snow free north, Probably for the last time before the coming snow cover, I took a pause midway of my drive in a nearby forest. After walking a while, I needed to head back to my car to continue my journey. I took a shortcut of the trail and on my first steps we both found ourselves surprised. A mountain hare just next to me jumped away in the distance. Even though I had different plans, I knew that I had to give this scene one last try. Mountain hares are a perfect example of species adapted to the Arctic. Their large packboards act like snowshoes spreading their weight in deep snow and they're known to trust their seasonally color-coded camouflage in the changing Arctic-like conditions. But now, with more and more snowless days, the mountain hare and other seasonally colored species are like spotlights in the darkness. Since the changing of their camouflage is controlled by the amount of light, 
and is not in synchrony with the snow cover. When it arrives, it's love at first sight. As simple it can be, these snowflakes are much needed. Offering shelter for the ones who end up staying here. And for myself, my dependence of snow is more on the emotional side. During the snow free season, you can carry only the minimum, but at winter, everything moves easier if the conditions are favorable. You can have a lot with you, and I take this advice a bit too seriously. Generally, in more challenging conditions, my progress was. well, not the fastest. With a sled weighing roughly 85 kilograms, every hill meant a lot of work. But despite the struggles, I knew the moments I hoped to film would be worth it. One of the most important scenes for the film was the moonrise after snow cover had settled on the ground. For this shot, there was roughly three days in January with snowy and dark enough conditions to film the moon rising behind the fells, illuminating the valley. Tämä vaatis mitään muuta kuin pilvetöntä keliä, mutta se on aika paljon pyydetty. At the location, I could only wait for the clouds to clear. Earlier in August, I had already spent my birthday scouting this location, and this time I found myself here celebrating the first day of the new year. Ei ole kyllä mitään parempaa. With two cloudy and snowpack days behind, and near the final day of favorable moon position, the clouds finally started to clear. I couldn't hide my excitement when I saw the moon come out during moonset, but concern followed. The sky would need to stay clear for the next six hours before the moon would rise. I felt incredibly lucky, as the past four days wasn't for nothing. As luck would have it, the clouds appeared just when I finished filming. Even though winter exists in my memory by these beautiful and bright moments, ever-increasing insecurity surrounds the season. It is impossible for me to imagine winter without the snow and coldness overthrown 
by six months of darkness. By recognizing our loss, we may look clearly in the future and take action. Globally, everything, and not just winters, is under change and the consequences are not equal. However, one should not devalue their loss. When we have something to lose in this global crisis, we have something come on to fight for. This was the winter I knew.